Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. His name is Andrew Winnett, and he is an uh, he is an entrepreneur and a specialist when it comes to retirement. And today he wants to talk about seven different strategies and ways women can comfortably retire. And he's going to give us a lot of different tools and strategies and help you along the way with some really valuable information. So I'm very excited to have him on the show. I don't want to waste any time. So Andrew, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Okay. Well, thanks for having me, Stacy. I appreciate it. And by the way, any content that I give today, uh, it is applicable for uh, for men and women. But I have written a book called Her Safe Retirement, which is a uh, uh, it's basically seven strategies for women to retire safely and comfortably in retirement. Of course, it carries over to men as well. But I, I'm a, uh, an entrepreneur, like what you said, uh, Stacy, and and uh, I got into this uh, retirement planning space not intentionally. I got into this world actually because of a tragedy in my family. Uh, it was 2009, and I was working at Wells Fargo, good old Wells Fargo. Everybody hates that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is right after the global financial crisis. And I'm sure, you know, many of us remember uh, that time. You know, I always joke around when I'm doing dinner workshops or I'm doing, uh, you know, my radio show that here in America, we have the memory of a goldfish. You know, we kind of forget, we remember that it happened but we forget how bad it was. And I remember working there at the uh, the bank and I was just starting to dip my toes into the investment world. And I was, Stacy, I was kind of part of the problem. You know, I was the guy saying, oh man, yeah. I, I used to say dude a lot. Uh, we lived in California. You say dude and bro a lot in California. I don't know why. It just means <laughs> friend. So if I slip and say dude, it just means friend. But I used to say, dude, you've got to invest in this one stock. This stock is going to go to the moon. I was so excited about it. And uh, when the global financial crisis hit and everybody lost on average 39%, almost 40%, that stock that I had been recommending to friends and family members, it didn't drop 40%. It went to zero. Oh, wow. And I had to face my my friends and family and my wife, frankly, you know, because we had I'd lost a bunch of money and it was a terrible, terrible time. And uh, before I tell you the rest of the story, I just want to give everybody who's listening, I've got a gift for you. Excuse me. Actually, I've got four gifts for you. Uh, I've got three of my books, which I'll talk about in a moment, including the Her Safe Retirement and one of my latest movies. Uh, it's called The Retirement Deception. You get all of this at nomorelosingmoney.com. Uh, no more losing money.com. You can get access to the three books in the movie. We'll talk about those later. But going back to the story, there I was at Wells Fargo. I was having the shame of, of apologizing. I'm so sorry. I was wrong. I didn't see this coming. Thank God I was just a little, little guy. I was just starting to dip my toes into the investment world. However, the guy next to me at Wells Fargo was big time. And this dude had hundreds of clients, and I got to see firsthand good folks in their 70s and 80s coming into the store ready to physically fight this advisor next to me because this Yahoo lost 40% of their entire portfolio, and they knew that they were going to have to come out of retirement and go back to work, you know, standing on their feet for eight hours a day at Lowe's or Home Depot or Starbucks, you know, and reporting to some purple haired, crazy person with face tattoos, you know, that's the age of their granddaughter. No more, you know, breakfast with the girls whenever they wanted. No more yoga three times a week. No more traveling to Europe. It was a brutal time. Yeah. <clears throat> and then right after this, I get a phone call from my younger sister of five years and she utters the words I'll never forget. I think dad's dead. And when I hear this, this, you know, this phone call from my sister, I'm like, what do you mean dad's dead? You know, my dad was only 45 years old at the time. He wasn't traveling. He didn't have a chronic illness. How could this happen? You know, and the long and short of it was my dad ended up passing away very young, out of the blue, left my younger brother and younger sister still living at the house. 
left my mom in a financial pickle. And, uh, you know, thank God he had the wisdom to have a couple life insurance policies. So my mom gets this, you know, this death benefit. And listen, it was by no means millions of dollars. We wish it was, but it wasn't. But she's faced with this big dilemma. What do I do? I'm raising two kids. I've got a $400,000 mortgage. Unemployment at the time, if we all remember, was double digits. Yeah. It was super hard to find a job. We had, you know, PhD experts who were, you know, working at Burger King because it's the only job they could land. Yeah. And so there my mom was. She gets this windfall of cash. Does she pay the house off and have nothing to live on? Does she live on this money, have nothing for the future? She decides to go back to work at the only job she could find, which was working at a sew and vac store. And uh, for nine bucks an hour, which wasn't cutting it, she figures, well, I guess I need to go back to school and get a relevant degree because then I can make more money. So after full time work, she's going to night school and that's not working. And she ends up having to call my grandma and have her move in and help make the payments. I mean, it was a brutal time, just super difficult on our family. And, uh, you know, I was out on my own, climbing the corporate ladder, married, got my own place. I'm good. But I was really concerned about my family. And I remember going over uh, to be with my my mom and my uh, brother and sister. And we'd go over there and just cheer them up and grieve together and, you know, deal with the trauma of losing, you know, your dad. It's just brutal. Yeah. And so anyway, we're... Uh, we're wrapping up dinner one night and I get this little spidey sense in the back of my neck where I'm like, Hey mom, I, you told me that you had invested with somebody that money. I want to, I want to see your statement. If you go back, what had happened was there was someone at church that had recommended this financial advisor to my mom. My mom had no clue. She was clueless about the investment world saving for your future. She didn't understand the stock market. She understood nothing. She gets this windfall of cash. She gets a a referral from someone at church about this advisor who went to the same church and she's got to be trustworthy, right? Because she goes to our church, right? right? So my mom sits down with this advisor. This advisor runs this little risk report. Oh my gosh, Suzanne, you have a very low risk tolerance. You should only be in 14% equities, the rest should be in fixed income and bonds. And that went right over my mom's head, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. But you know what, you go to my church, you seem like a nice lady, you came highly spoken of from someone else. Here's my money. I trust you, please grow it safely. Yeah. And she invested in the market. And here I am a couple months later at my mom's house, I'm looking at this statement after dinner. And I cannot believe my eyes. Much to my shock, much to my chagrin, Stacy, I discover that that quarter, every single penny that my mom had earned in interest was completely eaten away by the advisor fees. Oh, wow. When, when I saw this, I hit the roof. I mean, I was so upset. And, uh, you know, I come from a Jewish background uh, mm-hmm. by ethnicity, not by practice. I do believe in Jesus. I know it's kind of... If you're not, you know, on the the video, I've got a very small nose for ethnicity. I don't know what it is, but but anyway, in that culture, the eldest son, which is me, is is responsible for taking care of mom if something happens to pops, and that's exactly what happened. I felt so responsible, like this is my mom. Nobody's going to take advantage of my mom. Yeah. Well, that frustration, that righteous indignation, if you would, was a turning point for me. Right. I had to discover alternatives. What if we had another market crash? I mean, we were yeah. only like a year removed, less than a year removed from the, the GFC. What if it happened again? What if my mom yeah. lost 40%? She can't afford to lose that. <clears throat> so it set me on this path where I had to discover alternatives. There just had to be a better way. There had to be a way where my mom could participate in market upside, but not be exposed to the downside. Right. There had to be a way where she could get sound advice without paying a bunch of fees. Mm-hmm. There had to be a way for her to have an income that she could count on for life, no matter how long she lived. Yeah. My, my grandma lived to a hundred. She right. had little energizer bunnies running through her veins. You know, she just kept going and going. Yeah. And by the way, Stacey, I got to tell you this. I'll give you a little health secret. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 
my grandma had a heart attack, stroke, and cancer. Oh she my goodness. Ate, she ate sugar every single day of her life. Wow. And the doctor always was telling my grandma, Roberta, Roberta, you got to cut back on the sugar. I mean, it's going to kill you one of these days. She would, I mean, she had such a, a sweet tooth. If we ran out of milk at the house, she used that French vanilla coffee creamer as milk for her oh cereal. I mean, but she lived to a hundred, right? So if you yeah. want to live longer, just eat more sugar. That's, that's <laughs> my, little health, my little health secret for you. But anyway, don't do that. I'm not a doctor. But the, <laughs> the point is, is that my there had to be a way where if my mom lived to 100 she, that her income would continue she was worried she was going to have to work for the rest of her life there had mm -hmm. to be a way where she could retire she could you know acquire long term care coverage for uh, you know a very affordable price yeah and if you fast forward to today stacy i'm here to tell you that my mom now makes $70,000 per year her money increases every year to help offset inflation yeah. Uh, she was able to retire years earlier than she thought, uh, no matter how long she lives, she'll have an income that she can count on. Right. She's buying real estate. She's traveling, hanging out with the grandbabies. And here we are, you know, 15 years later, and she's finally on the hunt for a new man. And I'm like, <laughs> thank God, you know, it couldn't come any sooner. And by the way, if there's any eligible bachelors uh, <laughs> here that, uh, you know, maybe you're, you're on the prowl, you're looking I might know somebody and you know, <laughs> match.com and eHarmony. It hasn't been cutting it lately. I don't know what it is. We're getting a bunch of weirdos. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the algorithm's broken or something. Maybe <laughs> farmers only we got to go after. So anyway, <laughs> that's, that's my story. I started this company to help people just like my mom. And uh, it's been a wild ride. We'd, we've helped thousands of people across the country. I now have six radio shows. I'm on NBC every weekend. I'm working on my third movie. I've written four books. I've got a massive office here in the Nashville area. It's been a wild ride. And, you know, I named my company Retirement Renegade because we're fighting for your financial security. Right. You know, we, we don't want to lose your money. We won't lose your money. That's a guarantee. We're not going to charge you a bunch of advisor fees and yeah. we dress differently. We're not going to dress like Wall Street. We're really good at math. We're really good at math, but we're not going to dress like Wall Street. I don't want anything to do with Wall Street. The mm -hmm. longer that I've been around Wall Street, the more I realize Wall Street is all about maximizing their own self-interests at the expense of the middle class. Mm -hmm. And I want nothing to do with that. So yeah. that's my story, Stacey. That's amazing. You know, I, I think it's really important because I know so many people, they don't plan for the future they don't plan for retirement and then when something happens they're left out in the cold i can't tell yeah. you how many people i knew that when their husband passed or their their other spouse passed and they were all by themselves and they had no money everything was you know they just didn't plan for the future they didn't do the right things they didn't make the right choices when early on and then when when the time came they they didn't have the, the money and when they looked for government um government plans and things that they could try to get from the government they weren't given it if you had like yeah. five thousand dollars to your name you made too much money and right. you weren't qualified so then yeah. these people what are you going to do on five thousand dollars worth of savings you know how are you going to live on that you yeah. know and and i can tell you i can tell you so many stories about so many people with similar situations and these women were just devastated they didn't know how to how to go about you know living life and they had to resort to go into their their kids for help and and that yeah. themselves is, is you know that has to be mortifying for a mom to have to reach out yeah. to her children even though she knows oh. that the children are really willing to help you know, in their head, they're the care caretakers, not the kids, you know, right. it's really like, it's a, it's a really hard situation emotionally, you know, and, and it affects them physically. And, you know, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So think about how much stress yeah. this yeah. is put in on the elderly person. So yeah. when, when you have like different, different strategies and different ways women can comfortably retire, can you share some of those strategies and some, some of those things that they could do maybe to help prevent, you know, things from happening when the yeah. time does come? Yeah, absolutely. And listen, th those stories that you were just sharing, Stacey, you're not alone. I, I see them every day breaks my heart because um, 
women, you know, here's what I talk about this in my first book, which by the way, you guys can get some of my books in my move. One of my movies, if you go to no more losing money.com, no more losing money.com. It's free. If you want to book a 50 minute uh, free phone call with me, get your questions answered. You can do it there. But I'll tell you this. <clears throat> one of the things that it, um, is really frustrating for me is the fact that uh, so let me talk about the difference between men and women and how they solve this financial problem. Okay. And mm -hmm. actually it's, it's, it's a strength and weakness. And I talk about this in my first book, the Joseph strategy. Uh, I believe Joseph in the Bible was the greatest financial advisor to ever live. I built my entire firm off of five principles that I found reading the book of Genesis. But one of the things I talk about in that book, which you guys can get access to is women, when it comes to retirement, when it comes to money, OK, they are more likely to bury their head in the sand. I call it ostrich syndrome. Mm -hmm. They bury their head in the sand. They don't want to look at it because it requires confrontation, mm -hmm. whether it's confrontation with your behavior, with your lack of self-discipline, uh, with your lack of saving. Uh, maybe it's taking a closer look at our mortality. They don't want that confrontation. And so they bury their head in the sand and they avoid and they kick the can and they defer. However, if you can get a woman to at least address it or just take them by the hand and let's look at the problem together and how I will help you solve it, but you've got to at least give me permission to do this with you together. I can't right. want more for you than you want it yourself. Right. So if, if you can at least get the woman to look at the problem, yeah. they are a lot better at implementation and follow through, whereas men are they're more confrontational by nature, and they are more likely to look at the problem, be curious, explore different opportunities, but they struggle with, with the follow through, right? right? They, they'll have the conversation. They just struggle with follow through. So it's a blessing and a curse, right? If you could, women won't have the conversation initially, but they're, if they will, if they're just disciplined enough to get that ball rolling, no matter yeah. how ashamed or you know, self-conscious you feel about your situation, they are the ones that end up doing a lot better in the long run because they're really good at following through. Right. So here's what I will say. I'll give you a couple quick tips, but I also want to educate while we do this. Okay. So I'll give you a couple of these that are in the book. Again, if you want to get the Her Safe Retirement book, no more losing money.com. The first strategy that I talk about in the book is it's the, the chapters income is queen. Income is queen, not income's king, income's queen, right? Because we're trying to help the queens out there today. Mm -hmm. So Stanford Research did release an article recently. It's fascinating. They said by 2050, the average lifespan will be 100 years long. Holy wow. cow, a hundred years long. You got Elon Musk putting, you know, chips in people's brains, helping them live longer. I mean, listen, with modern technology, with AI, we're going to be living longer. The question then becomes, will we outlive our money? Yeah. Then as of today, <clears throat> the National Bureau of Economic Research, they came out with a study. <clears throat> they found that uh uh, excuse me, 46.1% of married couples will run out of money before they run out of life. Wow. 57% of single divorce or widowed will run out of money before they run out of life. That's more than a, that's more than half. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want the success or failure of my retirement left up to a 50, 50 coin flip. Yeah. But see, the problem is Wall Street is operating on a faulty premise. And I'll and I'll explain it like this. Stacy, have you ever climbed Mount Everest? Not recently, no. <laughs> okay. I haven't either. Um, I've ever I've only met one person who is attempting to climb Mount Everest. Uh, but when I was learning about Mount Everest, more people die going down Mount Everest than going up. And when I first when I heard that, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. But as I discovered, you know, when people are going up the mountain, they ate their Wheaties that morning, they're fired <laughs> up, they've got their eye on the prize, they get to the top of the mountain, they plant their flag, and this is where all the mistakes happen. Right. This is where, you know, they stay up there too long, they're taking too many selfies, you know, they get altitude sickness, they slip on a crevasse, 
and they they end up dying, you know, prematurely. Yeah. Well, going up Mount Everest and coming down is a lot like retirement planning. Right. I often tell people that the quote unquote Sherpa or the financial advisor or the way of investing that got you up the mountain is rarely the right Sherpa or financial advisor or way of investing to get you safely down. Why? Right. Well, if you look at going up the mountain, this is your accumulation years. <clears throat> this is your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, maybe even into your 60s. And right. you're saving money, you're putting it away, you're working hard, you're kicking butt. And it doesn't matter if the market crashes. Why? Because you got time to recover and time to recuperate. You got yeah. a paycheck coming in that you can rely on. Right. But once you get towards the top of the mountain, closer to that day, retirement, yeah. right? This is where you have to be more careful. Um, in my uh, first movie, The uh, Baby Boomer Dilemma, uh, I have the founder of the 401k, Ted Bennett, uh, in mm -hmm. the movie. And he talks about the retirement red zone or danger zone, which is five years before retirement and five years after. Right. And he said, if you lose 20% in your accounts, which, by the way, happens every five years, uh, we have a bear market every five years. Yeah. If you lose 20% and you need that money to live on, he said you would never recover it. Whoa, that's sobering, right? Yeah. So if you're in that red zone at the top and you're beginning your decumulation years, this is where preservation of principle is important. As you get older, it's not so much about how much do you earn, it's how much do you not lose. Yes. The problem with the growth guys, right? The Wells Fargo advisors, Merrill Lynch, Raymond James, the Ameriprise, you know, you feel, you know, Morgan Stanley, you fill in the blank. They're all the same. They're good at growing your money. That's important. Mm -hmm. But if you're using the same strategy to get down the mountain, this is why we're having a 50% failure rate, because although growth is good, their strategy is incomplete on the downhill side of the retirement mountain. Right. It's not just about growth. It also then becomes about, okay, income planning, longevity risk long-term care planning, tax planning, yes. estate planning. You know, you see your IRA and maybe there's a million bucks to make math easy, you know, mm -hmm. in there. That IRA is an IOU to the IRS. Yeah. It doesn't all belong to you, right? right. Uncle Sam's going to want his cut. So it's not just about growing your money. There's so many other pieces of the puzzle, which is why you need an expert who is is, is world-class at not just growing, but preserving, making sure you have a steady stream of income that increases the offset inflation for the rest of your life. They deal with Social Security. They deal with Medicare. They deal with long-term care. They deal with estate planning, tax planning, et cetera. Right. The point is, is that as you go down the retirement mountain, we do not allow any of our clients to run out of money before they run out of life. We do not want any casualty rate. If you go, if you look at Everest, there's a 4% casualty rate. Yeah. For every 100 people that go up, 4%, four people will not come back. Yeah. In America, there's a 50% casualty rate in retirement. That is unacceptable. And right. we're on a righteous crusade, a mission, if you would, to solve that problem. One quick other uh, tidbit, and then I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Stacey. This is a big one. I'm not trying to be a fear monger here, but in my uh, first movie, The Baby Boomer Dilemma, which by the way, guys, I'm giving three books in my latest movie away. Uh, if you go to nomorelosingmoney.com, nomorelosingmoney.com, if you'd like to book an appointment, you can as well. But in my first movie, Olivia Mitchell, who's the foremost expert of social security in the world, okay? She talks about how social security is headed for a cliff. You know, Bernie Madoff, he he went to prison for life for stealing $65 billion in a Ponzi scheme, okay? Right. Well, the problem that Bernie Madoff had is he didn't do it at a big enough level because mm -hmm. he would have been, you know, probably hired to, you know, and as some elected official. See, the thing is, Social Security is nothing but a Ponzi scheme. When I pay Social Security taxes, it does not go into an account for me later, it's right. not earning interest for me. I'm paying someone else's benefit today. That is by definition a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. The problem that we're going to be facing is that our demographics are cattywampus. They're off kilter. They're backwards. Yeah. We have such a swelling elderly population. Some people call it the silver-haired tsunami. Yeah. 
<laughs> that we don't have enough taxpayers to cover the rising costs of Social Security, Social Security Disability, Medicare, and Medicaid. Yeah. And we're not the only country in this predicament. China is in just as bad a shape as we are because of their terrible one-child policy back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Germany is in just as bad a shape as we are. Japan is the worst in the entire world. But what we are facing, Stacy, is that it used to be 2040, where mm -hmm. Social Security would have to reduce benefits by one-third. That got bumped to 2035, mm -hmm. then 2034, and now today we're at 2033. Barring massive overhaul of taxes or you know extending full retirement age out, we are going to have to reduce benefits by one-third across the board. What does that mean for millions of Americans? It's going to be devastating. Yeah. Devastating, right? Which is why if your financial advisor, which by the way, no one brings this up because it's a you know, it's a hot potato. They don't want to touch it. Yeah. If your advisor is not talking about this and creating what we call the Social Security Stopgap Fund, yeah. which basically is a pool of money that you can set aside that grows so that if and when Social Security is cut by one third, this thing kicks on and then you don't experience any interruption in standard of living. In fact, you may end up making more than you were previously. Yeah. You need something like this. Otherwise, it's going to blindside millions of Americans, and there's nothing that we can do about it because Congress just keeps kicking the can. So Social Security, might as well call it social insecurity, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wildly underfunded, you know, a lot of mismanagement, bad stewardship. And, uh, you know, but you've got to get your income up. Income is queen. I'll leave it with with this. As you can tell, Stacey, I've got the gift of gab. I can just go and go. No, I like it. You have a lot of great things to say. Keep going. Here's what I will say on the income piece, okay? And then I'll pass it back to you. What we do is exactly the opposite that Wall Street does. So Wall Street says you need a million dollars saved. Well, then, you know, the million dollars wasn't enough because of inflation and the 4% drawdown rule was too high. Yeah. Well, then you need one and a half. And then they're like, well, then COVID happened. And then the 4% rule was wildly too high. You need a 2.8% safe withdrawal rate. Well, then you're like, holy cow, how many friggin' millions do I have to have saved, you know, to have a decent income? Yeah. Then it's 2 million. You get all these conflicting arguments and it's all vague. It's ambiguous. How much am I supposed to stink and have, right? right. No one can give you the right answer. We do it the exact opposite, Okay. What we do for our clients, again, going back to we're really good at math, okay? Mm -hmm. We have them run the last budget they'll ever uh, ever make in their life, lifetime. Everybody hates budgets. Yeah, I tell people this will be the last budget you'll ever need. Go home, find out exactly how much you're spending per month. This right. includes eating out, gifts or donations, you know, fun money, traveling to Bora Bora, whatever. Put it all together. What is your monthly budget? And right. then- we can have an income that is guaranteed for the rest of your life to cover that, plus it keeps up with inflation, then anything other than what was required to obtain that is gravy. You can put it in higher risk investments. And if the investments grow, great. If they don't, it, you're not going to be living under a bridge because your bills and fund money and gifts and donations and travel are covered. Right. And then it's measurable, right? What can be measured can be managed. And so that's the way I would look at income planning. Mm -hmm. What's your bills? How do we obtain a income that covers your bills and increases uh, to offset inflation? And you're good. You're going to have so much more peace of mind. And they found, they did a study. When you have that, you mm -hmm. end up living 20% longer in retirement. So I just gave everybody years, years yeah. longer, <laughs> no more stress. And uh, you, you're going to want uh, you're going to have a very, very successful, happy golden years because your income's coming in and is guaranteed. You know what I find is a lot of people don't have a lot of background when it comes to retirement and when it comes to saving money and it comes to different putting your money in certain funds and, and doing the right making the right choices ahead of time, you know how do you know when you're with the right person? Like, you know, there are so many people I feel that, that sign, you know, on the dotted line and they're with a company or they're with a person and that person is not going to do the right thing for them. Now, yeah. are there red flags that people should look for? Like if you don't have a lot of experience when it comes to investing your money and retirement, you know, 
how do you know you're with the right person? How do you know that this person is not going to screw you over? Yeah, that's listen, that's one of the best questions you could ask. Very important question. So listen, I'm a certified financial fiduciary. That means nothing. Okay. <laughs> yes, I've got to do what's in my client's best interest, but do you know how many fiduciaries don't? You know, so if they say they're fiduciary, cool. You know, it doesn't mean anything. I would say that um, you really want to, there's a couple uh, key things that you can do. Number one, go online and look at reviews, mm -hmm. right? So on Google Maps and Better Business Bureau, we have the best reviews of any financial advisor in the entire state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't have 75, you know, cousins to make a fake review, right? These are real clients who are happy as clams, five stars across the board. You know, we go on Amazon and if we see enough five stars and enough people commented, we don't even look at the price. We just buy it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So reviews tell you everything. So I would say, look at reviews. If you see three reviews, five reviews, 10 reviews, run for the hills. <laughs> you see as many as you possibly can. There needs to be a disproportionate amount of reviews that are positive uh, in order for you to even think twice. Additionally, you, you want to find somebody who's independent. What do I mean? So when you're dealing with the Raymond James, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo Advisors, Morgan Stanley's, you fill in the blank, they're all the same. Right. Those are, you know, those are captive companies, which means they're only allowed to offer what the mothership allows them to offer. Right. Uh, the mothership will, I mean, it's very, it's, it's, it's a one trick pony, right? And you try to go outside of that. Hey, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Advisor, will you do a tax planning? Oh, they've all those, you know, they've got they've got the gift of gab too, but they'll talk around it and basically you don't get any tax planning. Uh, you know, are, do I have a hundred percent certainty I will not run out of money? They will not tell you that. Right. Uh, what about estate planning? Well, I've got a buddy from college who will do it, you know. They they don't do any of that stuff. So you need to find somebody who's independent and is what I call carrier agnostic. Mm -hmm. which means they are not beholden to one or two companies. They'll show you, hey, I've got all these different companies. We can put in your information here and it shows you what's the best of the best for your specific needs. And we just go with that one, right? right. So though you want to find a company that's independent and you want to find a fiduciary, you do want a fiduciary, but you want to make sure that they're fiduciaries with a ton of five-star reviews, that is super, super important. And that's a way. And then the third one, and this goes out to the women. Listen, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you believe. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe that God gave women the gift of discernment. Okay. Women may not be able to articulate why. And I could tell you so many stories with my wife where we go into a room and I meet this guy and I'm like, oh, this guy seems so cool. Like, you know, we might go into business together. And my wife's like picking up on her radar. Something is not passing the smell test with him. And right. she right the whole time. I couldn't pick up on it. She couldn't articulate it, but she was right. And I'm telling you, it would have saved me a lot of headache. Yeah. So and typically have the gift of discernment. I think that's just a gift that God gives women. They may not be able to articulate why, but they know that they're, they can feel, okay, this guy seems legit or he doesn't. But here's where that could be. Again, this is the exception, not the rule, where women have to be a little bit careful. Okay. Some women struggle with making decisions, right? being decisive, and they can confuse that indecision on making, uh, you know, choices with discernment, they are yeah. different. So you first, you have to go through the filter of, is this guy legit? Do I feel peace with him? Yeah. Yes or no. And then is this plan right for me? Because mm -hmm. there's actually, it's a two-step process. It's not one in the same. Right. You may, I'll give you another, just a quick story. I had a client who came in and uh lovely couple he wanted to retire early and uh they were sold on me but the plan that i had shown them wasn't the best fit for them because they wanted more income earlier than they're like listen we're going to spend a ton of money in the first five years and i was thinking like guys i don't want you to run out of money yeah but what he didn't tell me was he was still going to go back to work part-time with another job so mm -hmm. anyway they were sold on me, but they didn't like the plan. Thankfully, she had enough wisdom to say, hey, we really like you, but is there a possibility that we could have more income up front? And so I restructured the plan 
and it made a lot of sense and they ended up becoming clients. So it's a two-step process for women. Am I sold on this guy? Is he a fiduciary? Is he independent? Does he have really good reviews? And then am I sold on this plan? And if you're not quite sold on the plan, communicate with the guy that you feel good about. And if he's willing to work for you, it may be a match made in heaven. Right. No, that's great advice. I think, you know, this. these are things that people need to talk about more because for some reason, a lot of people avoid retirement. You know, they avoid that stuff to the very last minute. And sometimes they get to the point where they become sickly and they don't have it in them to make the right decisions, you know, and they yeah. leave it up to other people to make the decisions for them. But, right. you know, you know, people, I know people that started planning on retirement in their twenties, you know, they, yeah. they, you know, they, once they got, got a job, they started to actually plan for the future, you know, and then you got people who are a little bit more lackadaisical and they'll wait, you know, until their midlife, you know, and then, you know, you got people that are a little procrastinated and they wait till, you know, later on and they kind of struggle making the right choices and they could have missed out on a lot of things, you know, when it comes sure. to age, you know, is there a certain time that people should really start focusing on the, re on retirement? Is there a good time where people, you know, will get the best outcome if they start at a certain time frame? It's a great question, Stacey. So, I'll quote Warren Buffett, okay? So Warren Buffett said that the difference between the wealthy and the ultra wealthy is time. It's just time. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you're starting, what, you know, yeah, if you have the discipline and the the wherewithal and the foreknowledge to invest in your 20s, you are one of the few because people in their 20s do not invest for their future by and large. But listen, the 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 sooner that you can do it the better. There's that old quote the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The mm -hmm. second best time to plant a tree is today. Right. So listen, we're not getting any younger. It doesn't matter how frustrated you are with your situation. Do your part. The snowball will take off. You just right. got to do a little bit today. Just put, you know, you're stringing along good days in a row, right? So right. I saved this much. I was disciplined. I didn't buy my 17 cups of coffee at Starbucks like my wife. You know, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm being more disciplined, right? Maybe yeah. it's 60 today and 15 the next, whatever it is, right? But having a plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You got to have a plan in place, right? Right. I will tell you, I'll give you another big, big tip, okay? I am a huge fan of real estate. I mean, a huge fan. I think real estate is one of the greatest assets you can possibly invest in. There's tax benefits. It typically appreciates more than the stock market. It mm -hmm. keeps up with inflation. And as long as you're not, you know, a blockhead, you're not going to lose money. Right. Uh, especially if you're not over levered. Now, most advisors are not going to tell you this because they want your money to go with them where they can earn fees. But I'm here to tell you guys the truth. Your money in real estate will outperform the stock market every day and twice on Sunday. Now, I don't sell real estate, okay? So I have nothing to gain by telling you this, but I believe in it wholeheartedly. Do I think all of your money should be in real estate? It depends on the person. Yeah. Uh, I do, I will say if you are younger, one of the fastest ways to grow your wealth is gonna be in real estate. So I've the, the some of the most successful people that I've seen, they were- when they're younger, they have more risk appetite. So they'll buy a ton of real estate and they get sick of the headaches. And when they, you know, get older and want to chill and, you know, go to Mongolia or, you know, Australia or whatever and travel and they don't want the phone calls anymore, they'll, they'll cash out, pay their taxes and live the dream. Right. That is a really good way to do it. Now, not everybody can or will do that. It is what right. it is. So, you know, Owning your primary residence can be a great idea. It is expensive, you know, when the roof blows away in a tornado or, you know, whatever. But yeah. I just, I'm just a big fan of real estate and I'm not very optimistic. I'm not bullish, if you would, on the stock market long term. And I can tell you why if you want, I'm happy to do so. But honestly, Stacy, I think that the, the, the years of easy money are coming to an end. Yeah. And the the our government has made some terrible decisions over decades and the chickens are going to come home to roost at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And the people, the little guys who are in the stock market are going to be the ones holding the bag. And it's and I'm not talking the good bag, the bag full of money. They're going to be the ones that get wiped out. Yeah. Uh, and and it it's unfortunate and it's unnecessary, but um 
real estate will weather a storm better than the stock market will. Right. And the younger you can start in either one, you know, that that's, that's the better off you're going to be. But uh, real estate is just such a great investment if you're younger. <clears throat> now, do you think someone should actually like um, meet a few people before they decide, you know, who they want to, you know, work with, with their, with their retirement investments? Should they, you know, should they look around or if you, you know, get that first impression and you feel like that person is the right person and they have those reviews and they look like a, a good company to work with, go with them? Or would you suggest, you know, look around, you know, check everything out first and then decide what you want to do? It's a great question. Um, I would say it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. uh, it also depends on your schedule. Um, you know, if you are going back to that discernment thing, the the wives or, you know, if you're a single adult, divorced or widowed, women are going to know, I really like this person. I may not be, I may not understand the plan. That's typically what happens is like, is they're just not, they're not wired to understand logical, in-depth planning. Mm -hmm. That's where the advice is really the advisor's job to make it simple for them. Right. And, right. and, and plain, but are you sold on that person? Do they have a lot of good reviews? Are they the best of the best in their field? Why do you like them? What makes them different? I mean, if you can't tell them why they're different from the guy down the road, mm -hmm. you know, what yeah. are you buying into here? What are you paying for? Right. Exactly. Sometimes you do, you know, if you don't have that green light inside, you know, at the first go, you know, to the, the first introduction to this person, maybe you do need to do a little bit more research. The problem, though, is after three or four different advisors, you start having paralysis of analysis and you end up not making a decision at all, Yeah, which is, which is worse. Right. So it's oh, yeah. better for you to make a decision that maybe not all the stars align, but seven out of 10 did. Right. Uh, and to not make a decision at all. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. Now, if you had to take all the things that we discussed today and, and focus on a couple of takeaways to emphasize to the listeners, what are some of the important factors that you want them to remember and consider? Okay. I will tell you this. If your advisor is not talking about tax planning, you need another advisor. Mm -hmm. uh, you are going to be shocked in two years when taxes go up. The Trump tax cuts, love them or hate them. <laughs> the dude's a lot of hot water right now, but let me let me tell you, love them or hate them, those Trump tax cuts helped us. It was passed in 2017. It's going to sunset in two years, less than two years. And when that happens, taxes are going to go up. Our highest ta marginal tax bracket in America was as high as 94 percent. Mm -hmm. Taxes, believe it or not, are some of the lowest that they've ever been. So if your advisor is not coming up with a tax strategy for the love of all things holy, you need to find a, an advisor that does. Mm -hmm. Estate planning, okay? If you don't have a trust set up, then what ends up happening is everything that you leave behind, typically everything is going to go through probate. And what ends up happening is, you know, you want your kiddos to, you know, you want to be remembered in with fondness, you know, with happiness. You don't want your kids, you know, shaking their fists at the heavens saying, curse you, mom, curse you, dad. You left me a big mess. You know, <laughs> you want to trust so that it's number one, you can control the money from the grave, right? You yeah. can make sure that if you're, you know, your son gets married to some weirdo, you know, <laughs> it's not going to go to her, right? Or whatever, right? right? You want to control the money from the grave. You want to make sure that it's not going through probate. It's effortless. It's easy. If your advisor doesn't do that, find another advisor. If your advisor's charging you more than a quarter of 1%, he's charging you too much. Right. I will say that again. If he's charging you more than a quarter of 1%, you're getting ripped off. Now, listen, everybody's got to make money. I get it. You, you know, you get what you pay for. The worker's worthy of his wages. But if he's charging you more than a quarter of 1%, it's typically way too much for the value. Honestly, these advisors, and I know this because I came from that world, they rebalance your portfolios like once a year. Yeah. They don't even look at your stuff. They're on to the next sale. They're not doing, right. they're not managing anything. Yeah. They're just collecting money. Right. Right. So if you're paying more than a quarter of 1%, you're probably getting ripped off. Um, if you do not have a guaranteed income stream that you can count on for the rest of your life that increases yeah. to help offset inflation, find another person. 
If all of your money's in the stock market and you are retired or about to retire and your advisor's recommending the same strategy, which has a 50% failure rate, find another advisor. Right. <clears throat> and then buy real estate. <laughs> you you'll you're you're you will look like a genius in 10 years if you buy real estate and you can I agree. Hold yes. definitely agree now you've talked about a lot of the services that you have could you just like give a a, a, a kind of like a a brush over of all the different services you provide for people so they understand what you do and how they can probably reach you yeah absolutely so um, if you want to check us out, so I've got a bunch of, I've got three books and a movie. If you go to nomorelosingmoney.com, nomorelosingmoney.com, you can get access to the three books, the movie, you can book an appointment with me, 15 minute, no obligation phone call, get your questions answered for me. Um, you can also go to retirementrenegade.com, retirementrenegade.com. You can see me on the news. You can listen to my radio shows, learn a little bit more about what we do. We're going to do, it's a holistic retirement plan. We're going to do everything that you need. <clears throat> the tax planning, the income planning, the long-term care planning, the estate planning. Uh, we're going to make sure you have safe growth strategies. The only thing that we will not do is we will not lose your money. We will not charge you a bunch in fees and we're not going to have a three-piece suit on, right? I'm just going to tell you that right now. We're really good at math, but we don't have to dress up in a three-piece suit to prove it. Okay. <laughs> so if you're wanting something like that, we work with clients around the country. You can look at our reviews on Google Maps and Better Business Bureau. They're the best in the entire state. I'm very proud of that. It's because we provide people results. You can go to retirementrenegade.com, nomorelosingmoney.com to get those gifts, or you can check me out on YouTube uh, under Retirement Renegade on YouTube, and you can see some of my videos. This has been amazing, Andrew. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I really thank you because this is a topic that we really need to talk about. A lot of people don't really think about retirement, you know, when they're in their early years and then they get older and then they start like focusing on, you know, what they should have done or could have done. And, you know, maybe we should do it now. And then they don't know how to do it. You know, uh, no one sat yeah. down to really explain. And, you know, it's yeah. so easy to sit with the wrong person. And like you said, you can get screwed over very badly. And you yeah. don't want to be one of those people when you're, you know, getting close to your elderly age, you know, to have everything scrambled all over the place. And then, you know, having everybody else trying to help you, you know, put the puzzle together, you know, and uh, why not put the puzzle together and, you know, have it all glued and pretty and put it on a frame and yeah. stick it on the wall and it's all done. That's right. and you can just enjoy life, you know, and, and not have yes. to worry about all the little things, you know, so this was a, a lot of valuable information. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. And I hope we'll see you again. Thank you, Stacey. I look forward to it. Yes, you have a great day. You too. Thank you.